Hello and Namaskar viewers, I am Sanjeev Pandya welcoming you to this week's episode of the Tax Talk with AJ right here on your favorite channel ITV Gold. Happy to be with you once again every week we bring you all the things that you need to know related to the taxes, corporate taxes, personal taxes. I know tax season is over, but actually in the reality tax season is never over because IRS allows you to file extension and also the for the corporate taxes for LLCs and SNC corporation, they also have a, a you know date to file their taxes after April 15th or March 15th. So tax season is always on, but of course you know April 15th is the is the date and everyone talks about taxes. In this episode, we're going to give you very, very interesting information that you really need to know after the taxes. What happens after the taxes? That's what we're going to find out. The show is brought to you by Sci CPA Services, a full-fledged accounting firm, tax advisory firm, and they also advise you in your retirement planning where you can invest your money to save your taxes. That's what they do. They're full-fledged, on-hand, experienced, and knowledgeable CPAs. Yes. Certified public accountants, they can guide you in the right direction. Uh, you can give them a call over the phone, in person, on Zoom, any way possible. The meeting can be scheduled by calling them at 908-380-6876 or visit their website, Science APS Services. They have multiple locations in New Jersey, but they can help you no matter where you are in the United States of America. So, all right, with that note, I'd like to welcome Mr. AJ Kumar of Science APS Services to take you further into this episode of the tax talk sir welcome to the show thank you Sanjeevji thank you for the kind introduction and you sure. rightly said even though we are past April 15th but April 15th is just the tax deadline for the individual taxes now the next tax deadline the big tax deadline that we are talking about is May 15th correct and that's the tax deadline for all non-for-profit companies yes but in today's episode we want to discuss something very interesting we want to, is to discuss IRS dirty dozen. <laughs> I was just going to say that, that you know, um, there is always something in the group. It could be top 10, could be top 20, could be top 40. So here we have, uh, you know, a dirty dozen. That means top 12. What exactly is this dirty dozen? It's a uh, scam. It's, uh, you know, these are the scams. They actually, you know, individuals, they really scam the other individuals and people who are gullible to it, people who fought for these kind of traps, they end up losing thousands of dollars. IRS releases a list of dirty dozen scams that every taxpayer should follow, should be careful and keep an eye on it that no one scams you and any one of these you know, the most popular scams. That's why it's called dirty dozen scams and that's what AJ refers to those dirty dozen scams. Now, we're going to start with number one, which is employee retention. What exactly is employee retention credit items? So employee retention tax credit was a new rule that was created during COVID. Mm. So the rule was if you retained employees during the COVID time for n number of months, you can go back to IRS and request the payroll tax credit for that period. So the rule was that your business must be directly affected by the COVID okay. by the shutdown. Mm. But in theory, everybody was affected. So the way the rule was written out was a bit ambiguous. So a lot of companies, like mushrooms everywhere, people were claiming that we will get you the ERTC credit and we'll charge you 10%, 15%, 20%. So based on contingent fees, mm. the way the, the scam worked, and again, please, it's a scam, don't fall for it. The way the scam worked, a lot of these mushroom companies that you never heard of it. They created a new company. Now they come to you for your business. We can get free money from IRS. It's called ERTC, Employee Retention Tax Credit. We'll only charge you 20%. They take their 20% and they go home. Now they will close the company. So if you take an example, if the ERTC is $100, you give them $20. But if you are found to be ineligible, IRS will charge you 20% penalty. So you end up paying $120 back to IRS with interest and penalty, even though you only got $80. So please don't fall for ERC scam anymore. All right, so these are the companies, they 
pop up like mushrooms. Absolutely. They pop up like mushrooms, they contact the people, they give them very attractive you know, uh, <coughs> news that we can help you and blah, blah, blah. And uh, You're right, that's the first sign. Mm. If you see a company that was just started in last year, two years, three years, that's the sign you don't want to go to that mm. company. Exactly. Go to a proper CPA. We have been around for 20 years. Go to your CPA who has been around for 15, 20 years and ask them why do they not want to do ERC. Mm. Find somebody who can do ERC but has been around long enough to earn that credibility for you. Okay. So normally, you know, in the scams, taxpayer falls for it and they end up giving them, you know, money and everything. In this case, a little bit of a different situation because in this case, taxpayer uh, anticipates to get some money from IRS and that's why they say, oh, okay, this is what you're going to do for me. Here is my company, right. here is my payroll and everything, take it. And uh, obviously, you know, not everything ends on a happy note. At the end of the day, when the taxpayer realizes that there was a mistake in it, there was a misinformation given and then company already folded up their office and boom, they went to the next yep. mission. All right, so that is the employee retention credit claims and they become very, very popular during and after COVID days. It was number one, actually. In yeah. all the dirty dozen, mm. ERC was number one scam. Okay, all right. So be careful with that. Let's go to the let's go to the next one. It's called phishing and smishing. Now this phishing is a different kind of phishing. This is a phishing happens which is on the net on internet. That's phishing. Spells with P. You will see it on the screen on on the screen. So phishing and smishing. So the word phishing means collecting somebody's information mm. via email. Yeah. Uh, scrupulously and using this information to get the credit card to get to file a random absurd tax return so the way the IRS system works anybody can file the tax and if you have the, the social security number date of birth certain information over there and based on what you file IRS will give you the refund now IRS has six years to come back to you to say you did not file it right you should return the money with interest and penalties so it's very important for you to be protecting your information including social security number date of birth driver's license so when the information is collected via email it's referred as phishing and when the information the scam collects the information via texting mm. that's when they refer it as smishing yep Okay, so that is the one and got to be careful. This is a scam that you don't even realize it and you know, they can get to all the information uh, absolutely. and then they run away with it. All right. So while we are in a phishing and smishing, which you know by now, it happens because of, you know, your email and internet. There is a third scam, which we're going to talk about, AJ is going to tell us, which is online account help from third party scammers. Uh, absolutely. So this is a new one mm. that was not there uh, in the earlier years. Now the new scam is with ERTC, with phishing, IRS allows you to create your own account by going to the website. A lot of taxpayers don't know how to go about it, how to do it. So these third party companies, you get a random call, you owe money to IRS, we can help you create your account. In order to create your account, they will ask for the social security number, that date of birth, driver license copy. This is another attempt to collect your personal information so they can apply for the credit card, file a false tax return. So it's another attempt that we will help you create your online account with IRS. If you want to create an online account, create it yourself or go to the CPA who is filing your taxes. Don't fall for this scam when somebody is just calling you randomly to say, we can help you create your account, give me your social security number. Yes, that, 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 that should never work. One has to be very careful uh, with that one. You know, when, when it comes to scams, one of you may say that, oh yeah, I'm aware of it, I've heard about it, there's nothing new. But believe me, in this list of 12 scams, you will find one or two at least very, very interesting. I never knew, but there's this, uh, there's this kind of scam uh, exists out there. It's called false fuel tax credit. Uh, absolutely, hmm. so fuel tax credit, is very popular credit. Uh -huh. It saves a lot of money if you have, if you are eligible for it, if you have the right credential for it. So fuel tax credit was meant for off highway, not because you have trucking company and you drive the highway. So I use a lot of fuel, let's get the fuel tax credit. It was meant for the farmers because they were using a lot of equipment on the farm that needed the fuel. So fuel tax credit is not for the trucking companies. If somebody is trying to help you, trying to claim certain credit, they get the money because they are working on contingent basis. But at the end of the day, IRS has six years to come back to you to say, 
you did not qualify for this credit. We gave you the money, return the money with interest and penalties. Okay, so that is very interesting, good to know. Quickly, we have one minute and I do want to cover this one before we go into the break. It's called fake charities. This we know happens everywhere and taxpayer really needs to be careful. So there are fake charities and then there's an understanding around it. Uh, so charity has to be a 501c3 accredited charity, not C4, not Chamber of Commerce, not religious organization in order to qualify as a charitable donation. On your Schedule A, if you want to have a charitable donation, it has to go to 501c3. It cannot go to Panditji. It cannot go to, <laughs> to, to somebody individual. It cannot go to the Hundi, the donation box as we covered last time. The money has to go to the, the 501c3 charitable organization. There are a lot of people who are calling. We are calling from this department, uh, police fund. We are calling from this fund. It's a 501c3. You can claim the fund. Don't fall for the scam. Okay. All Wherever right. you're so giving the money, make sure you have proper receipt. Okay. Because other than that, what you give to priest and what you put in the hundi or the donation mug is called seva. Yeah. All right. So these charities, you got to be careful. With that note, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to have more of this uh, Dirty Dozen Scams for you in this episode. Did you know how many people fall for the scams every year in this country? 2.6 million. 2.6 million people fall for some sort of a scam every year in this country. And the number one scam is the fake identity or the fake charity scam. People are calling that we are calling from this charity and people are giving money, donating money that they don't know where the, where the money is going. 2.6 million people. 2.6 million people every year. And uh, one of them is, you know, one of the most popular scams that people fall for it is a fake charities, which, which we just talked <laughs> about right before going into the break. You know, I, taxpayers, they're gullible. And when it comes to charity for any cause, they'll say, yeah, okay, fine. I want to help out somebody and so and so. And boom, they gave the money. But got to be very, very careful. If you have, if you have done it till now, no regrets, no remorse. It happened, mistakes made. Everyone makes mistakes, but from going on, um, in the future, be very careful. Let's go to the number six out of, you know, uh, dirty dozen IRS scams. And this one is uh, unscrupulous tax return preparers. The people who say they are knowledgeable, they can prepare your tax return. Would you want to trust them? So just remember, everybody is supposed to use the same IRS guidelines. So the number one uh, hint if somebody is saying, if I get you more money, mm. will you pay me more? Mm. Nobody in this country can get you more than what you deserve based on the system. If somebody is trying to get you more money based on contingent fees, that's the first sign you do not want to work with that CPA. The second sign, and there are a lot of such signs, if you find somebody who is not willing to sign their name, if they are saying you're paying them, they are preparing the return, but they are saying self-prepared, as if you prepared, they are not putting their name. That means they don't have the proper license, proper credential to file your taxes, to put their name on it. So there are, there are a lot of telltale sign, but make sure it's once a year and you as a taxpayer are obligated what's going on your tax return. You pay them the fees and they're out of the picture. If tomorrow IRS has a problem with the tax return, they will not blame the tax preparer. It's your responsibility. So make mm. sure you do it right. All right, because when you go to have your tax return file, you want to make sure the tax return file is correctly. And that's why I always say in every single episode, that's why Science CPA Services is there for you, because they believe and they their motto is to, to have your taxes done right. That's a key thing. Refund, not refund, that's a different thing. But have your taxes done right, so that way IRS don't think that you cheated them and you don't want that to happen. Let's go to scam number seven, which has to do with social media. Social media always comes in a picture no matter what. Fraudulent from filing bad advice. Uh, absolutely. So everybody is an expert on social media. Mm -hmm. You will see uh, a lot of these uh, Facebook and a lot of these websites where everybody is giving tax advice. Hire your own children on your company. I had a client who wanted to hire his three-year-old child on his company's payroll. So you see a lot of these tax advice but unless you can trust this advice unless you know what you're walking in. You are responsible for your tax return. You cannot really say, I read it on the social media. You cannot really say, I read it on the Facebook. So if you are doing your own taxes, 
प्लीज मेक श्योर यू डू प्रोपर रिसर्च एंड डोंट ट्रस्ट द सोशल मीडिया और गूगल ज्ञान आई से इट यू पुट इट ऑन दिस थिंग ऑन गूगल एंड देन गूगल विल टेल यू एंड गूगल विल गिव यू हाफ द लिंक इज ट्रू हाफ द लिंक इज नॉट ट्रू सो डोंट बिलीव इन गूगल ज्ञान Make sure you do pro- proper research when you do your taxes. Believe in CPA Gyan. That is Absolutely. the most important thing. You know that that is the Because most important. It is your thing. responsibility as yes. a taxpayer. Yes. You are on the hook hmm. to have it right. Hmm. You cannot say I read it on the Google. That well, doesn't work. <laughs> Absolutely. Talk about Google. Of course, you know that is very popular. Internet, everything and anything can be done. The uh, scam number eight has to do with that one, which is uh, spear phishing and cyber security for tax professionals. Uh, absolutely. So we talked about phishing. Phishing means collecting information via email mm. and using this information to create a scam. When we say spear phishing, spear phishing consider spear and phishing. Spear phishing is more targeted and is targeted towards tax professional, towards CPAs because CPAs typically have this private information for thousands of people because they are doing the taxes for thousands of people. So by targeting CPAs, these scammers are hoping to get. information for more than one person i mean if they can sort of hack into a cpa database hack into somebody's uh, system they can collect information not for that person only but for lot of clients that this person is serving so this is called spear phishing which is targeted phishing uh, targeted to cpas attorneys or the professionals that are dealing with lot of private information okay interesting next scam has to do with offer in compromise mills how does that work what kind of scam well, is that well that's very interesting so offer in compromise means you offer a lower than what you owe money to irs and irs compromises in theory say okay instead of 100000 dollars that you owe why don't you pay me 30000 dollars the way the system works if your net asset if your earning potential cannot support the payment that you owe irs sometimes based on certain forms you have to go through 433f you have to show how much assets you have you have to show how much income you have so it's a, it's a long process it takes 6 to 9 months but there are a lot of scammers out there who will say how much do you owe 100000 i can reduce it by 90% give me $2000 i can reduce it by 97% give me $3000 you pay them the money knowing the system will take 6 to 9 months after 9 months you cannot really find them you don't really know what happened to your money so please don't fall for these scams if you want offer in compromise go to your cpa let somebody who you know who you trust who you see where they are working let them handle your offer in compromise so i have a question right. i have a question related to that let's say a taxpayer goes to a cpa right and this let's say cpa happens to be greedy and then willing to do some non conventional things on the tax returns and making sure that they you know uh, they are able to get uh, taxpayer more refund so that way they can collect more fees right if something goes wrong god forbid uh, uh, one is that would taxpayer go back to that cpa to have their problem fixed and second question is would that cpa take chances to go against irs rules well there are a lot of what ifs mm. i don't thinks it's worth for the cpas to go in the gray area for a client it's not worth the money mm-hmm. but hypothetically if the cpa intentionally did something wrong the taxpayer does have the right to go back to the cpa say mm-hmm. what happened here why am i being penalized or go to irs that this is the advice i got but at the end of the day the tax uh, person the taxpayer is responsible the taxpayer signs the return the benefit of the money came to the taxpayer first you should never hire a cpa but taxpayer may be oblivious to this fact they, they right. may not know but but you have to know you cannot hire a cpa on contingent basis this is basic if a cpa is telling you if i get you more money would you pay me more that's the first tell tell sign this is not a good cpa if everybody mm. in the country is supposed to follow the yes. same irs guidelines same irs rules then nobody can get you more than the right refund so don't pay the cpa more money because the cpa can get you the get you the extra refund you will be responsible as a taxpayer so if you cpa says that i can get you more money the taxpayer has a right to ask the question at this at that time that listen more money less money doesn't really matter to me but make sure you do my taxes right make sure you guarantee exactly. that if i get audited you will be you there you will be you. able to that right you will be able to there should be a, there should be some kind of agreement letter signed between It, typically CPA. there is there is an engagement ah, letter that signed between the taxpayer and which the i'm saying i think your firm does it 
uh, right? Right. Yeah. But most of these engagement letters are written in a way which clearly says you are providing the information. We are responsible mm. to only give you the tax advice. It's your tax That's return. a different thing. That's a different thing. But in that, you know, uh, the taxpayer can say that, listen, you did something wrong which right. doesn't say an engagement letter right. and you're responsible well, anyway. Uh, absolutely. So, absolutely. you know, we need to educate our taxpayers and also. Could, Look into the, all be, the angles. It could be unintentional too. It could be one of yeah. those things that it simply happens. gave the right advice. One document was missing. But if, as a taxpayer, yeah. you get a notice, mm. The first thing you want to do is take this notice to the CPA. Sir, mm -hmm. you filed the taxes. Okay. You filed the taxes. What should we do about it? All right. Quickly, let's go to number 10. Um, viewers, these are the IRS dirty dozen scams. And this one is a scams aimed at high-income filers. Of uh, course, high-income filers, they want to save money. They make more money. They want to save more money uh, on taxes. They are easy targets, mm. too. <laughs> Just because uh, by doing this, instead of scamming 10 people, mm. if you scam one, high net worth individual, you make more money more than money. scamming 10 people. So yes. they are easy targets, they are soft targets, and these and a lot of these people are greedy. They did not become rich only by doing uh, on one fine day. So a lot of these scams like captive insurance, micro captive insurance are, uh, are allocated in a way where uh, they are targeting the rich people. We can save you $100,000, mm. we can save you $200,000. You have to buy this insurance plan or invest money into this plan and it's tax deductible. So if you are a high net worth client, you owe it to yourself to find the right CPA as opposed to just trying to do it yourself or finding somebody who can save it's the most worth, money. It's worth to hire a very professional Absolutely. knowledgeable CPA and pay them fees. We have two minutes to go to and we got two more scams to cover. All right, so number one is bogus tax avoidance strategies. Uh, absolutely, so there are a lot of tax credits. Uh, energy efficient credit, uh, solar credit. There are a lot of tax credits that are available uh, in the system that IRS allows. So a lot of times these scrupulous taxpayer will say, ah, I'll get you the credit. I don't even have a home. That's okay. Just oh, 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 really? It, it, it happens all the time. Oh. So people claim credits that they do not qualify for or some of these tax preparers, wow. uh, not the CPAs, hmm. uh, they will ask you, do you have a home? Did you install the water heater? Did you install the, install the insulation? I don't even have, no, don't worry about it. I'll get you the credit. <laughs> so if uh, there is a situation like that, that's a telltale sign. Take your file, go to somebody else. It's oh, not worth it. Man, this is crazy. Anyway, quickly, scam number tw uh, 12, that's a scams with international elements. So absolutely, so a lot of uh, international organizations are there. And this is mainly for the businesses. A lot of these businesses have alliance, relationships, subsidiary in foreign country. The payments made to the foreign country have to be reported in advance to IRS. So the money that you are paying to a foreign country, company, unless it's reported to IRS, it's not going to be tax deductible. There has to be a 1042 around it. There has to be tax withholding around it. So just be careful as who is giving you the advice. There are lot, okay. the, all these scams are for your information only. One thing we want to say to summarize it as a taxpayer, you sign the return. You are responsible for your tax return. You cannot really say, I read it on Google, this CPA told me, I, my friend's friend told me, my uncle's friend told me. None of that works. Your tax return, you take responsibility. You responsible. Absolutely. You're responsible for providing all the right information. And when you sign it, you're responsible to review it and ask questions to that CPA or the tax preparer. All right. In the end, quickly, uh, in case if somebody is victim of any one of these dirty dozen scams or frauds, they should report to IRS, right? Right. They should report to IRS. They should get an IP protection pin, identity protection pin from IRS to make sure the information this scammer collected cannot be misused at least to file the taxes. Okay. All right. With that note, we come to an end of it. AJ, if there is a way we can find out from IRS, what are the top 12, 15, 20 excuses that they get from taxpayers? That would be nice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that would be it's nice. It's a, a loan release. All right. With that note, we come to an end of the episode, but not before AJ has a quote for us. Uh, absolutely, Sanjeevji. So don't be scammed by a new tax credit opportunity. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. It's your tax return. You are responsible for it. All right. Very well. Very informative episode today is the tax talk with AJ right here on ITV. We cover 12 most popular scams and IRS actually has released this list. It's called Dirty Dozen Scam. Be careful 
when you file your tax return. And um, once again, you can contact Science CPA Services for any help you need. God forbid, if you're in the middle of IRS tax audit, you can contact them. AJ, thank you so very much for Absolutely. your um, thank help. You. Once again, Science CPA Services at 908-380-6876 or sciencecpaservices.com. I am Sanjeev Pandya. Until we meet again next week, next uh, week, the same place, same time for different kind of show. Watch out for it. That's all coming up next week. Till then, do take care of yourself. So long. Thank you.